became another world trouble spot with the nationalization and seizure of the world's largest oil refinery in Abadan in Iran. A fifth of the world's oil supply was cut off and nationalist feeling ran high against Britain and the Western democracies. Premier Mossadegh, spearhead of the oil nationalization program, took his case to the United Nations. Suddenly a shot hits the ground before me. To my left, a man called out Mossadegh's name, and immediately a gang of thugs surrounded him and start beating him up. Then they toss his lifeless body on top of a bus while screaming pro Shah slogans. Across the street, people are looting Mossadegh's home. Mossadegh was finally apprehended and awaits trial for treason. Little did I know then how my life would be shaped by just one day. And after nine hours of bloodshed, the forces of the Shah were in command, and Mossadegh's reign as virtual dictator of Iran had ended. Fundamentalism took hold with a fury and a force that helped ignite the still impoverished masses in Iran, who felt they had little reason to be grateful to the Shah. Just as the hostage crisis is seen by many Americans as the be-all and end-all of U.S.-Iran relations, Iranians have an episode that they look at as the crucial moment in the history of U.S.-Iran relations. The Shah, who had fled to Rome, comes home, backed by General Zahidi, military strongman, who engineered his return to power. Iranian oil may again flow westward. And to my astonishment, my father's name popped up quoted in various books on modern Iran. Was this really my father? Your father, according to State Department records, one of the individuals who was instrumental in helping resolve... All I knew before was that my parents were in New York City in 1944 where I was born. I didn't know why there and not in Iran. <laughs> Inheritance is the story of the search for my father's true identity and the connections to the tragic events of modern Iran.